Okay, folks. I'm back again. So, part two. Um, excuse me. So, in 2014, um, well, I was diagnosed in 2012 with multiple sclerosis. In 2014, um, 2013, I was uh, introduced to an uh, MS group in my backyard where I live, and um, I started doing that once a month, the second Saturday of every month. Uh, I started that in 2013, the summer of 2013, thanks to my mother. And um, by 2014, uh, I would say the end of the summer, beginning of fall, I had this crazy dream. But for me to explain that dream, I have to go back to when I was a baby, four years old, five. And one of the first scary dreams that I can ever remember, it will always stay with me because this was a recurring dream that I've had in, throughout my life um, growing up, consistently having it. And it would be with me in my home in Brooklyn, downstairs. Uh, we had a two-story apartment, five bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a storage room. Big place, right? <laughs> and um, anyhow, I was about four or five years old, and the first time I had this dream, I'm coming out of my bedroom to go upstairs. And I probably reached the first, maybe the one, two, maybe three steps. Um, and we had stairs going up and there was a landing and then we had another stair, flight of stairs going up and you'll be at the top. So as I made it to the, th the first, second, third step, I can see we had my father um, put some mirrors on the landing part of the wall and you know the most school mirrors with little branches gold branches on it and um so anyway long story short i see a reflection of a shadow what i deem to be a shadow or maybe a spirit but i didn't know how to explain it back then in my my young mind and i saw these eyes and it wasn't eyes like what you see here it was more like seeing a car in fog as headlights it was just like a glow and i saw that and i immediately because i've never seen anything like that before in my life and i got i was petrified so i turned around where my back is now facing the mirror and i look up directly up and this figure is looking down at me and all i can feel is I'm scared one, but I feel hatred, I feel evil, I feel, it's a feeling that I'm getting, it's like a chill in my bones, and I'm just frightened, frozen, didn't know what to do, and then I wake up, oh, I was pissed scared, um, but I kept having that dream, and that dream then got influenced by pop culture, you know, Dracula, Boogeyman, Aliens, whatever it was that I was afraid of, Freddy Krueger, um, all those things it's that image started taking place but that dream kept recurring over and over throughout my life throughout my teenage years and my early 20s so finally I moved to California and then of course 2012 I get diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and I choose a healthy route you know the story if you don't you can look at some of my earlier videos 2013, I joined the MS group. 2014, I have this dream. <laughs> so, the, re I, the recurring dream comes back, but not quite the same. And I didn't realize it was the recurring dream because what happened was I was on the opposite end. Instead of being the kid at the bottom, I was the one up on top. So how that dream began was that I walked through the door, came into the apartment, and I went straight into our kitchen. Walked to the kitchen, I don't know what I got, I can't remember that part of the dream, but I know I came back and I noticed that the, the front door was open. So I immediately go in to go lock it, the top lock, bottom lock, we actually had three locks on it. So I locked all three, like yo, what the 
hell did somebody come in? The first thing I do is go straight to the closet, make sure nobody's trying to hide out in there and try to sneak up on me. And then from the closet, you know, I turned around and that's where you have the, the, the flight of stairs going downstairs and you have the landing and then you have the second flight of stairs. So I'm at the top of the stairs and I see through the mirror, I see this little shadow spirit with these eyes and I'm looking down and I'm like cussing up a storm. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. You don't belong in this. Get out of here before I kill you. And I'm doing all this. Now, mind you, I'm scared of shit. Because I don't know what it is. It's a spirit. But it was small in stature. It was not big. It was really small. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't. I just knew I was afraid. And like any dog that's afraid, they will bark, bark, bark. Make a whole lot of noise. And they're afraid. And I was afraid. So as I was cussing up a storm, saying, I'll kill you, get the fuck out of here, my wife wakes me and she was like, yo, you talking in your sleep, yo, what happened? Like, you were cussing up, saying you're going to kill somebody, whatever. I was like, I just wish I was shook. And I don't mind, I grabbed my phone and I went to the restroom. And I'm just, like, trying to remember the dream, so I'm typing it into my phone. And then um, I call my brother. And I tell him about the dream. And as I'm telling him about the dream, I come to the realization, like, yo, wait a second. That, I was, that, that dream is very familiar, but it was on the other. Yo, wait a second. The first scary dream I ever had was me looking up from the bottom stairs and seeing a shadow and being frightened. Like, I was scared for my life. And here I am now on the other side of that. And I'm scared as hell, but I'm being vulgar. I'm going to kill you. Get the fuck out of here. And I was like, yo, what if what, 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 what if that was me? I, what, if that, what if that was me? And I felt a certain kind of way because that resonated with me. It put chills in my spine. It was like, whoa. A long story short, I tell my brother, the next time I have that dream, I'm going to have a conversation with myself. And I told my wife, if you ever hear me talking in my dream again, let me go through the motions. Don't wake me. A week goes by, no dream. F following week comes around. I'm f pretty much forgetting about it because life happens. No dream. The third week comes around. Oh, I forgot about the dream. And I forgot about what I said. But I have a dream. And it's not the recurring dream. It's a new dream. In a current house that I was living in, which is a townhouse where I was living in at that time. And um, we, were sit we had a sectional, and I was sitting on the sectional. And in front of the fireplace area, we have a mirror. Uh, and the mirror is long enough on the sides where you can see on the sides of the, the, the fireplace, you can see your whole body and then on top of the fireplace, the mantle. So I'm sitting down and I'm looking at myself in the mirror. I'm going to pause right here. Uh, I'm not going to pause the video, but I'm going to pause the story right here because I want to explain something to you when I was younger around the same age when I first had that dream um, my sister and I who's three years older than me I'm the youngest of five kids you know being bored in the house or whatsoever play games I had nobody play with me so I would beg to play with her she would be the only person I ever be able to play with and she'll say you have to do everything I do we used to stand on that landing with all the mirrors and she used to tell me the person in the mirror the person in the mirror, the reflection in the mirror, they're pretending to be you, but they're not really you. So we got to move in a way fast enough so they can't see who we are. I mean, so so we can identify that they're, they're not really us. Excuse me. So we used to do all kind of crazy moves, trying to be like, I know you ain't me. You're not me. And playing around like that, being kids. <laughs> so let's let's fast forward back to the dream. 
So I'm, I'm sitting, I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at myself in the mirror, and something about them eyes. I'm like, whoa, something ain't right. It was like a look that I saw it do that I don't think I did. So I jumped up really quick. And of course, he got up extremely slow. <laughs> and it was like he was saying, yeah, you got the idea, yeah. Of course, I'm petrified. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I don't know what the fuck you are. I will kill you, get out of here. And I'm going through the motions. So it abides, it, it, it starts to, to, to walk away. And then it goes towards my kitchen to the garage door opening to go out that way. We had a front door, but that's the way that we normally come in and out of the house. So it was going out that way. And as as the, my reflection opened up the, the, gar the garage door, <laughs> it then closed and it said, no, I ain't going nowhere. And I said, holy shit. So now I'm petrified. And now this description is quite clear as like pretty specific I was in front of the kitchen counter that separated the kitchen from the dining room and on that kitchen counter there were tomato paste cans small little cans of tomato like small 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 little cans of tomato paste and um, I picked up two of them and I tried throwing it at him <laughs> and it probably went like two inches in front of me <laughs> Because it didn't go nowhere. I had no power. I had no strength. I had nothing. I picked up another one. Tried doing it again. It didn't do nothing. And here he is walking back right to the location in front of the fireplace. And I'm like, fuck. I'm like, all right, man. What, what, what the fuck do you want? And like, I just gave up because I knew I couldn't do anything. So I was like, what the fuck do you want? And he goes, I'm just here to make sure you don't kill yourself. And I go, what? I love myself too much to kill myself. And then he bends over. Hold on, let me. He bends over and he goes, deep inside. Oof, I wake up. Holy shit. I wake up. My wife is like, yo, you were doing it in your dream again. Did you have another dream? I said, yes. I immediately recorded it on my phone so I wouldn't forget, but you know, it was like probably four or five o'clock in the morning. So she then turns over and go back to sleep because I knew she's not gonna wanna really converse with me. So I go back, go to the restroom, I call my brother, he's three hours ahead, he's on the East Coast. I'm like, yo, G, remember I told you about that dream and I said I was gonna have a conversation with myself. Yo, I just had a conversation with myself. And that thing has sat with me for a while for him. For, for, for me to, 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 to say in my dream, I'm just here to make sure you don't kill yourself. It sat with me for a long time. But my response was genuine. I love myself too much to kill myself. Are you crazy? And he goes deep inside. Deep inside. But that thing resonated me, with me so much when I heard what Joe Dispenza said in that interview that I said in the first part of this video. Remember, when he con got in contact with those beings or the beings got in contact with him and told him, hey, asking him to have his audience raise their frequency. We love what you're doing, but can you please raise your frequency because we can't lower our frequency anymore. We're going to lower our consciousness. And we love ourselves too much to do so. I was diagnosed seven years ago. Four and a half of those years, I was on point. Strong-minded, strong will, diet impeccable. Nothing can stop me. Nothing can stop me. Two and a half of those years down the drain. And I mentioned it in one of my earlier videos. I'm not going to go into much detail about that right now, but two and a half.
half of those years down the drain. This year alone, I have relapsed twice. Twice. <sighs> Not a good look. So, when he said that, I knew what it meant because it haunted me for a long time. Like, am I going to get that bad that I'm going to end up wanting to kill myself? Even with this last relapse where I couldn't walk, I couldn't feel my, my lower, lower extremities. My, it was starting to rise up to my back and my upper torso, my left hand, I, my didn't have I, the fine motor skills and then over to my right hand even in that hour of desperation of wanting to even take medication and taking the steroids I didn't want to kill myself but I understood what the message from the beings was that I allow myself to lower my frequency for two and a half years. For what? To be apart? No. I told myself never again. When I got that message, I said, mm -mm, never again. Never again. And from doing the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza and doing my meditations and constantly learning reading his books also uh, 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 listening to Dr. Uh, listening to Bruce Lipton oh man I'm putting in that work nothing else matters to me and I'm empowering myself and the more I do the meditations to know that I, I know who I am I know I'm putting myself out there I know I'm subject to being ridiculed but I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks about what I'm doing because I'm doing it for me and for those who can be inspired by me. And that's where I'm at mentally. I don't do this for anyone else but for me. Because this is part of my healing. And I invite you into my journey. You don't need to listen to my 20 minute videos. I'm long winded. I'm sorry. But I've come to a point where I know I am love, I am compassion, I am full, I am whole, I am powerful, like I said in my dream. I am a healer, I am a teacher. I am. And I can only get to that point now because I know I am. I'm all of the above I am dot 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 I am and I send that message for all of those who feel like they've reached up or they feel that they're limited or can't go beyond what they see that's in front of them forget about what you see that's an illusion you have the power to change yourself your well-being just don't limit yourself, otherwise you limit your blessings. So, when I say that today's topic is about wholeness, that's what I meant. And I've been connecting the dots to my life ever since I've been on this journey. And I know I am. And I know people will know my name and know who I am. And this is not for fame. This is not because I'm looking for attention. No. This is a new day and age. And as Dr. Joe Dispenza says it, we're superhuman. You just need to believe in the power of yourself. Period. And I believe in the power of me. I believed it seven years ago when I was diagnosed. And I believe it today trust so if you like these videos <laughs> i can't believe i'm actually saying this but if you like these videos uh, please subscribe to my channel because <laughs> um, i'm just gonna keep being as real and transparent for all to see into into my world my life and um blessings
peace and blessings. Thank you.